Yo, what up, though? This is comedian Cool Keith. We right here live at the LOL Lounge. I'm chilling with my man Jeff Sauster from thesausage.com. That's the website you want to get logged on to. I'm comedian Cool Keith. That's Jeff Sauster behind the camera. And we're here chilling for thesausage.com. Peace. brother like me. A routine traffic stop is a whole new experience in 2012. And I knew it was something, you know, the minute he came to the car, I knew it was some bullshit just by the question he asked, you know. He come to the car all serious and shit. He was like, uh, sir, you have your license, registration, and birth certificate, please, sir? I'm like, birth certificate? You know how you start patting your pockets and you're looking for something you know you ain't got, but you pat the pockets anyways? It's like, who carries that birth certificate around? That's a new shit. Then it dawned on me, oh yeah, you know, ever since Obama had to verify his blackness, that's the thing now. So you gotta drive with your birth certificate. <laughs> so he goes to the car, you know, he wasn't sure if I was black or not, so he had to, you know, radio in the dispatch. So we radio in, I, uh, yeah, 22 to dispatch here. I got a black guy allegedly here pulled over. I'm gonna run him through a couple more tests to make sure he's black. Over. <laughs> he come back to the car, see, tapping on the window like, Sir, you wanna step out of the car, please? Uh, you wanna name the Jacksons from lightest to darkest for me, please? <laughs> How'd I get the name Cool Key? That goes back to high school, uh, a friend of mine and my barber at the time, Lil Mike. Every time I would get my hair cut at his crib, I'd be so, he would remark on how relaxed I would be in the chair. And he was like, man, this dude cool as hell, you know? Man, it just stuck from there. And then when I got to college, I went to BG. I didn't come there with the name. It was a, another funny incident. We was running for the, uh, what they used to call it? the little shuttle bus that to take you around campus. We was running for it, we was late. And everybody was running. And I was running real relaxed while they was just, ha you know, doing all this here. But I was still keeping up with them. And my man Keelan was like, man, this dude even run cool. So then he starts saying cool, Keith. Then it just stuck from there. Man, I got a lot of them. Um, the ones that come to mind off top, let me see, Dick Gregory, Eddie Murphy, Red Fox, Rodney Dangerfield, George Carlin, uh, Richard Pryor, um, Eddie Murphy, if I didn't already say him. Even some of the newer cats, uh, Damon Williams, uh, D. Ray Davis. Uh, it's so many to name, but a lot of them is like, I just admire different traits and qualities about each of them and try to incorporate and infuse them into one, into myself. Like Red Fox, I like the way every time he hit the stage, he was geared to a T. He was suited and booted, blinged up. You know, he was classy with it, even though he was raw and raunchy. Eddie Murphy, I like the way he was, uh, he was the rawest comedian ever to still maintain mainstream. You know what I'm saying? But he was raw with it. But he was mainstream because he was just that popular. And he took it to new heights as far as he was like the Jordan of comedy. You know, and I like Rodney Dangerfield for the quick wittedness and George Carlin and Dick Gregory because they were social activists disguised as comedians. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the list goes on and on. My comic style, to be honest with you, Three years in, I, I can't even say I can define my style yet. You know, I know I, w I, know I would say I'm funny. Um, I can be witty. I can be raw. I can be clean. I can be um, uh, the social commentary type, if you will. But as far as being able to define my style, I don't think I've done that yet. I never did comedy, that's a good question too. I mean, mm, something like entrepreneurial-wise. I went to school for print journalism, but that's not really what, not, nothing I want to do a career in. 
but uh, probably DJing, cutting hair, and uh, them two things for sure. I don't know what else, DJing and cutting hair. <laughs> The average visitor finding my refrigerator. Uh, shoot, if you find something, let me know. You know, uh, you probably will find some fruits and veggies for sure. Uh, some condiments, mad condiments, and uh, some to-go boxes. The first one that popped into mind, man, is... You go down there looking for justice, that's just what you find. Just us, Richard Pryor. That's hilarious and witty and social and that's a whole lot of stuff wrapped in one. Five-year plan. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much do. I got like a yearly plan and if I was to accumulate it into five, I would say over the next five years, I want to see myself still doing the LOL lounge. Like that's something I want to incorporate and just put on my belt as you, as you could say, you know. I want to still be doing that at whatever level it is in that five year mark, which of course will be bigger than what it is now because it's all about progress. Uh, I want to be still doing stand up shows. Uh, I'm never trying to really be a household name I just want to be able to live comfortably off telling jokes. And numerically, I would say, I want to be able to make a living off telling jokes. Where, let's just say right now, if I was able to earn, just say, a thousand a week off doing comedy, I would be content with that right now. And then next year, I set it at a different goal. And the year after that, another goal in the year after that and so on and so forth. So my goals really ain't like astronomical or far-fetched, but uh, I'm striving with that every year, every month, every show, really.